I don't got a net. I'm gonna have to walk up the stream and bring him up here and hope he's hooked good. Come on, buddy. Nice fatty, look at that. Hey y'all, so I'm up here at the river again, about to do some trout fishing. We got a variety of different baits we're gonna try today. I'm gonna start with some night crawlers, pitching those on a little fish finder rig, just kind of scoping out the place, trying to find what's in some deep holes. And then after that, I think I'm gonna switch it up, maybe do a swim bait, but I also got these Berkeley uh, mouse tails. So I'm gonna try those. I've never tried them before, but I've seen some videos on here of y'all smashing some trout on them. So I'm gonna see if they work for these little stocker rainbows. Aside from that, I might cast a swim bait. Oh no, we'll see what's going on. So uh, let's see if you think I'm gonna catch some trout. If you think I'm gonna catch more than two trout, how about this? You give me a subscribe right now. And if you think I'm not gonna catch two or more trout, just hit that like button. That'll be all right. It still helps me out. <laughs> A little nibble right there. <clears throat> I kind of cast it out right on the edge of the main current coming over these rocks there. Hoping it'll kind of sit right on the channel that it makes the seam between the big current and this kind of slack water that's pulling it back in. Hoping a nice little trout will be out there waiting to eat something. Something's playing with it a little bit. Just touched it. Did it? Did it? That was about it. So it may have been something teeny weeny. Yeah, there's my worm. Or it may have been that thing. Little sculpin or something. Look at that little guy. I actually had a saltwater aquarium with a coral reef tank. And I had a fish, a little scooter blenny that looked almost just like this thing. It darted around between all the rocks eating these little shrimps and stuff. Look at that guy. That's cool looking. <laughs> Hooked right in the side of his mouth there. I believe that's a dragnet of some sort see how their fins go they kind of sit on the bottom like that and dart around i'm actually gonna see if we can see get an idea how he swims i'll show you check this out kind of sit like that, camouflaged on the rocks waiting for something to come by. So this is like a little two to three foot deep hole that happens right before you can see going across the river there, this little shallow rifle spot. And the whole river has to come up and go over that series of boulders right there. So it's kind of really fast moving water on top and in the bottom of the pool it's fairly still water. So I was casting my bait up towards that bigger boulder on the right side of the screen there you can see. And just letting the current on a pretty tight line kind of drift it down into that deeper spot. And then as my bait got taken oh to the actual little rifle spot, I just reel it in quick. Something bit it though right in there. What? Nothing. Just lob it right back up there. Some kind of fish just surfaced out there, I've seen. Oh, there we go. Got him. I've seen him come up after it. Ooh, it looks like a nice one, too. Yeah, it is a decent trout. There we go. I don't got a net. I'm gonna have to walk up the stream and bring him up here and hope he's hooked good. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come over here. No, not in the trees. Around here. All right, now I think I'm gonna get him. 
That is a nice one. Nice fatty, look at that. Nice. That's a sweet one, he's fat. Hooked right in the side of the mouth there. I'm gonna hook him. There we go. Nice, I'm gonna set my rod down. I'm gonna get the close up. Hold on. Let me get my phone out. <laughs> Take an actual photo. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh my gosh, fish, chill. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Some play with it. <laughs> I need to check my bait. Make sure I even have a worm on there. I don't think I do. A little bit. It's all chewed up though. There's a lot of little fish in here. Little sunnies. Little green sunfish. And the uh, creek chubs too. And the creek chubs, they'll strip your bait real quick. Something teeny weeny. What is this? A little sunny. Oh my gosh. See that? <laughs> little shiner. I hooked him on the side. Right through his tail. Oh my gosh. Alright, little buddy. Shiny little bugger, though. Look at that. So this part of the river isn't quite as wide, but it's really it deep. It's like wide. four to five foot deep in this area. And uh, the entire bottom's just staggered with these giant boulders that clip you off if you're on bottom at all. So what I did, I just clipped on a little float about two and a half foot or so above that worm. And I'm just letting it drift down through here. And this is like my third, fourth cast drifting it through here. Got something, something little. Is it a little sunny? Oh, a little teeny weeny trout. Nice. That's a stalker trout right there. Just gonna pull him up and out up here. Get up here. That's just a little stalker size. Ah, oh, come here. It's tangled. Come on, you. <laughs> and stuff all tangled up here that's the size they stock them that was stocked probably here in like october or something a little 11 incher they stock them between 10 and 11 and a half inches somewhere in there and that's about what he is he's been gnarled up though something that wasn't my line something crazy got him oh. come on quit bugging out let me get a nice look at you Pretty little thing. They throw these in here like 15,000 every couple of months or every month throughout the summer. So they seem to be hitting the tail of this thing quite a bit. Wonder if I just nip like a quarter inch of that off. Oh, that'll do. So this was my first time ever trying out these Berkeley mouse tails. 
and uh, started with them just on a number six gold hook. They float really good, so I wanted to get it up off bottom. And then I got that about a foot and a half or so above a little stop that's holding just a 16th ounce weight. And I was casting upstream. This whole area is about three to five foot deep in places, and the water's moving super fast. It's coming right over the dam and rushing through here across this bare limestone. So I wanted just to kind of use that weight to drift it through and let it kind of jiggle around. I would stop it every few seconds and just let it sit and kind of play in the current. And then I'd twitch it up and let it move a little further and drift with the current. And then once it got downstream of me, I'd just slowly twitch it up back to me, letting it stop every few seconds or so. Here we go. Got one. Here we go. Little brown. Oh, wait. A little pickerel, a little tiny chain pickerel, look at that. Not a chain pickerel, but he's some kind of pickerel, a little golden one. I didn't know things like this were in here. Well, I knew there were a little bit, but whoop, there you go. I wonder if that was what came and hit at that last time, a little golden thing. Behind me here, these are actually where they raised the trout. This is the fish hatchery. And they used to allow people to go on in there and walk around, check it out, and see how they actually do the operation. But uh, ever since I've been here, it's been closed down because they've been doing construction work. But uh, when I was here just a minute ago, walking by right back here, I saw two trout jump up back here. It was kind of cool just seeing where they're actually raised and stuff. And then each one of these different runs, they have different age cycles. So they basically breed them out by age groups like every other week they have a set hatching and they come out and they just move them on through up the stages until they're old enough to be released then they launch them into the river at like five six different points along the river it's kind of cool that guy right there is where i wanted to be casting this out where that little stream comes out into it but that's all right that's what happens in the public waterways. You gotta make way for the people. First come, first serve. <laughs> but I always wanted to go up by the dam and check that out. No, I did. There's nothing crazy happening up there, I guess. I don't know. It's alright, there's some fish up there. There's a few holes down this way, though. I'm gonna go check out if my camera battery holds up again. We'll see. Ooh, something just hit it. All right, there's stuff out here, so we'll take that as a sure sign. Let's see. Nab that tail, pulled it down. All right, I'm just gonna try. I only got 30% left on my battery for my camera, so I'm just gonna try some random stuff. Try those mouse tails, I got a little spot of power bait on here. Let's just see what happens. There we go, something's on it. Got something on the power bait. What do we get? Oh, nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. Nice. Let's see if we can hoist them up. Oh. Come here, buddy. Don't go so wild. Oh, he's he swallowed that stuff. He's throat hooked. Oh, wait. Yeah, he's hooked deep and bleeding out. So. Just gonna cut the line. I can retie that bait any moment. I'll put him on the stringer because he's bleeding out like crazy. So I, I honestly, I'm always surprised with that power bait. It just doesn't feel like it should catch trout to me. <laughs> what? I guess it does. These rainbows, they like this stuff. Yeah, look at him bleeding out. So we'll put him up on the smoker. If you released him, he'd just die here in a couple minutes probably, I'm sure. Be nice. All right, but now I can retie the new hook. 
put him back in the water so he stays alive as long as we can at least. <sighs> yeah, already the poor guy's got no fight left in him. He's done. Hook deep. No power bait, man. Huh. Purple power bait of all things. All right, y'all, score one for the power bait already. I'm gonna toss this out here, see if we can't make a score two. I don't know, the power bait. It just kinda, it's unexpected for me growing up fishing wild trout, but the stalkers, I guess it smells like the food they eat in the hatchery. I don't know. There we go. Oh, bluegill. <laughs> Another one. Oof. Catfish bait, flathead bait. What it should be in the summertime. All right, y'all, my battery's dying. I think with this guy, it's getting colder and colder. It's supposed to be raining for real. It's held out. I think I'm gonna kiss this guy goodbye and call that a day, y'all. All right, y'all, it's freezing cold. I'm about to get hypothermia. I think I'm gonna call it a day. I've had a couple break-offs, caught a couple fish. I hit that three trout. So y'all gotta hit that subscribe button. But next time, stay tuned because we're going up to the actual Mammoth Spring itself. I'm going to go check it out right up to the spring where it flows into this river. We'll start casting right there and see what's all in there. Because I heard there's a little better fishing up there if you're willing to wade through the stream. And I got my waders on so we can do that. <laughs>